Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, and or six, that's six for sticks. I don't know if anybody gets that reference. That's from the 1993 AFL Grand Final when Stephen Kerner had to kick six goals in that game. Still lost, nested and won it. And I still remember them saying that's six for sticks when he kicked it. Catherine will get that reference, though. Hi, Catherine. Welcome back. It's been a long time since I've heard that reference. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Baby Bombers Grand Final, isn't it? That's the Baby Bombers Grand Final. That's the one, 93, yep. Yeah. You got your Herds and your Ola Renshaws and your Curie, Mercedi, Fletcher, Wanganeen, all, all Wanga, good names. Wanga, Wanganeen. Um, you know, you'd think that nothing would come close to the 1993 Grand Final, <laughs> but this episode of Andor might come close to the 1993 Grand Final. I'm just going to put this out front right now. I'm just, and I'm, I'm usually, you're usually the one who gushes on this show. That could be the best episode of Star Wars television I think I've seen ever on any show. Yeah. And you know what I'm going to say it right now? Return of Luke Skywalker can get in the bin compared to that episode. Because that was a great moment, but it wasn't an amazing episode. This was an amazing episode from start to finish. Yep. Yep. Um, Every single part of it was amazing. Obviously, the episodes leading up have been fantastic, but yeah, Great television, let alone Star Wars television. Just great entertainment. Just absolutely just paced beautifully. The tension, the action, the visuals, the story, where it went with the characters, um, the fake out. You thought the little kid was going to be safe, that he thought he was going to die, then you thought he was going to be safe, and that he, he wasn't. And it, like. I, I don't really know where to start. It, it res- I've literally just finished it just then. I've just come back, come on to talk to you now. Um, what was it called again? The, the eye. eye. Right. The Eye. Yeah, it talks about you know, where the Imperials are, you know. They're just callous disregard of the um, people of the planet. It shows us an amazing heist it shows us the lengths that the reb- rebels will go to. You know, we think of them as these heroes. Oh, no, you know, they won't hurt this little boy. Oh, no, having the boy hostage is all part of the plan. Mm. And- it, was, it was amazing to see the plan pulled out because, I, you know, they talked about it in the, th- in the thing, but I didn't really, like, as soon as they all got into that room and they pulled the guns on everyone, I went, oh, this is like a hostage situation. I thought it was a sneak in you know, go in undetected kind of... I don't know why in my head I thought it was more like a get in under the radar, load the thing and get out before anybody realises kind of thing. I I thought that too. I thought it was a far more, yeah, sneaking or infiltrate or, you know, walking like you belong there type of thing. Mm. And, yeah, somehow... Which it was to a point and then it was more like, nah, now the only way to do this is to literally stick some guns in people's faces and, and um, yeah, which is sort of shows why that the guy on the inside was so crucial, really. He had kind of had to get all the pieces in the right spot. Yeah, he was the one who had to get them in the front door. Like, once they were in that door, then, yeah, they were taking hostages, whatever. But he was the one who had to decide that they were the group of four who would escort the engineer in. So that engineer, which was... was just some random guy, <laughs> was it? <laughs> it wasn't Tarkin, it wasn't uh, Galen Erso, it wasn't Mendo. It was just some random dude who... Yeah. Was he the guy who was in the trailer as well or did he turn up... Was he who they were talking to in the trailer? Like, you know, when they the at the start and they're... There's the three of them. There's the two guys who've got the cups, and they do. And that's from the trailer. Yeah. He was just the guy. He was there all along. He was hiding in plain sight. Yeah, like we so, saw him yeah. in the in the trailer <laughs> weeks and, ago. <laughs> and I've used that gif, um, you know, of, of the commander, the the engineer, and now I look at the gif properly. I go, oh, that's Lieutenant Gorn, the the re- rebel in the back of that gif. Yeah, of, of them drinking. Well, coffee. when I saw that that shot from the trailer and I've gone 
Was he there all along, or has he? Did they did they edit him out in the trailer, and that's why we just never really cottoned on that he was there. Um, but it seems like he was just, again play, hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Um, and it was just weird because like even there's a few things from the sh- from that trailer in that obviously like um, Cassian flying the ship at the end with the with all the stars and stuff over the top. I never put two and two together yeah. that that was a part of that or. Or any of that stuff, or the Tie Fighter things, or or anything. I mean, I never really went back to the trailer after we sort of the show went, but it's, yeah. Um, how do we play this out? I I don't know whether we just go through beat beat by. It seems silly just to go beat by beat because people would have just seen it, but it just it just opens up. Mm. It, it yeah, it was just so expertly done that it was sort of. Hi-fi and lo-fi at the same time. Yeah, the obviously the nerves of the night before. Nemec saying, you know, he didn't sleep, and Cassian being and or you know, slept like old, a rock. <laughs> yeah, you know, the old hand saying you'll you'll get through it. You know, mm. the excitement will kick in, um, and finally we got to see what. Val's and um, Sinter's plan was, which was, yeah, sneaking through the dam. It was literally just the that they couldn't get into the building dressed as soldiers because there were no girl soldiers. That was effectively it, wasn't it? It was like, well, in order for I'll, you guys to get I'll in the room, so, yeah. that yeah. you can't dress up as soldiers and walk in the front door. Um, so there was no legitimate way we could get you into the building. And also we needed someone to jam the comms at the at the tower as well. Mm. Unless some dude with a mustache screws up your plan. Oh, why does it always have to be someone competent <laughs> and good at their job? How dare they? Well, I mean, I mean, I know that there was. I mean, there was a little bit at the end, and I guess we'll come to that when we come to it. But there was no like double cross during the heist, though, which was quite nice. Like there wasn't someone at some point who was like, "Now I'm I'm played you," and you know. Yeah, and. Which was great to see because obviously that plays on our expectations of a heist, that something goes wrong during a heist or someone, yeah, double crosses them. Because in so many heist films we see, you know, the practice run or they talk through the plan. So While that they do the we- plan, so you see the yeah. plan. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and it was quite but, good because, yeah. I mean, for something like this you couldn't, you couldn't really. There wasn't a point where you could betray them until the job was done. Anyway, you know what I mean. Like there, there was yeah. so much of it because in order you needed all the hands on deck, and just the fact that they had to use like the guards to move all the money. Like they're going, oh yeah, we've got like a whole freaking bank vault full of physical yeah. money that's really heavy. <laughs> so we have to use the guys, and then they like got that dick general to move the stuff till he killed him from a heart attack. <laughs> like he, he, he hadn't done any physical labor for so long that it, he basically just dropped dead. Yeah. I thought maybe that was a fake out that he was going to do the old fake heart attack and but didn't. No. No. No, but yeah, like it was a good plan, but still I sort of go – you should have like counted on having some movers, like some, I don't know, like anti grav movers or something. Yeah, I thought maybe there'd be some droids or something might have done it, or yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, using the people that they had in front of them to move the money, just counting on that no one wants to be killed over. The money, mm. because even the commander was like, "Yeah, just do it." Yeah, it's well, we had the worth. hostage as well, and that was—I mean, yeah. that was an interesting touch of just the fact that his family's been living there, <laughs> and they've been yeah. there for sort of seven years, and you know, he's he's got his wife and his son there, and you know, they don't particularly <clears throat> seem that thrilled to be there, but it's like, well, you got to go for dad's work, <laughs> I suppose. <Yeah. laughs> it's just you got to go where, yeah, your father's posted on. You know, obviously that kid's like a military brat, um, to yep. use the term. Um, so he gets taken everywhere. And, yeah, so it's, it's yeah, not something I expected um, to see. Even though in, like, the fourth episode they mentioned the commander's wife, but I don't think I expected a kid as well. I think that's but the first – is that the first on-base 
Imperial family we've ever seen in the Star Wars? Oh. I can't think of it. I'm mean, sure it's probably in books and stuff, but I don't think I've ever seen it on yeah. screen. Maybe it's some of the, one of the cartoons. I think I, yeah. I was. I, I made a reference to something in one of the cartoons. I might have been shaving. I was maybe seen shaving in Star Wars, and then apparently there was an episode where Kane, when Kanan shaved his beard or mm. did some shaving, and then someone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's there. I'm like, okay. But technically, I guess that yeah. counts. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, again, you know, taking hostages, including a child, is showing, okay, the rebels aren't these, you know, angels of good behaviour who wouldn't do anything wrong. They they mm. are crossing lines. They are crossing lines that we didn't think they would and yep. yet taking a child hostage is one of them. It's showing that, you know, what they've done for the rebellion. So when Cassian's saying that line, spies, assassins, saboteurs, all these things we've done for the rebellion. Yeah. Well, it's funny because Val actually makes a distinction. Is it Val or is it the other character? I think it's Val. And she's just like, you know, you'll just kill us all. She's like, we won't. That's what you do. But if we go down, we'll take you all down with us. Yeah, so that was Val. And yeah. it seems like, I mean, we don't know for sure that they did stick to their word because, you know, the other girl, she leaves at the, you know, she sort of just walks out the front door at the end um, mm-hmm. with a uniform on and we don't think that she just killed everybody before she left. But um, so I, that's interesting because, you know, obviously they lost one, one of the team on the way on the way in the vault and then she walks out the front door and I don't know what happened to the to the Imperial commander who was on their side. I guess he just sort of slunk out the back door as I, well. I think he got shot as well. Oh, did he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he got shot um, because he was out in the open exposed when the um, – you know, competent communications person came in with the um, soldiers, oh. and so yeah, he was he was shot. All right, I'll have to go back and I'll have to watch and double check that. Um. And yeah, so he was shot. Uh, Temik was is that his name? Um, Temold. He the guy was who shot. was the stormtrooper, and that was interesting too. When they're yeah. just like, "How does he know all this stuff?" He's just like, "Yeah, well, he used to be a stormtrooper." I'm like, oh. see, in my brain when I heard that, I was like. Well, shouldn't the stormtrooper know about the making sure your weapon's ready to shoot on the outside, or does he not think about that? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. That's yeah. a good point, actually. Um, yeah, it was just it was just thrilling. Like it was just the the approach, and I'm like, oh, they're going to go scubaing in the thing, and and it was sort of intercut with the um, the locals who were coming to celebrate the the bit and. And um, that was quite fascinating too, and I mean that was spectacular. Just the visuals of that, of the meteor yeah. shower above the above them, and and the Tie Fighters. I mean the the way that oh, the they just showed, tie fighters. well, just the way that they showed it, and them getting in, and even the like, because I've always done the angle of like the front on, almost you know, looking up from the cockpit bottom, like looking yeah. up. You know, it's always been that Star Warsy thing of like that's what a Tie Fighter, how they shoot a Tie Fighter pilot. And I know they do a little bit different in Force Awakens where it's sort of Finn and Poe in that front and back one. But but then you sort of got these different, I don't know, just slightly different ways of shooting them inside the thing, which was just really fa- interesting. Like, oh, cool. Like, they've never really done it like that before. Um, I just thought that was really, really, you know, kind of fresh way to do it. Yeah, it was, you're right. It was filmed different from other Star Wars, like we've we're so used to our Star Wars things being presented in a certain way, and yeah, it's just being presented slightly differently. So we didn't see, you know, Cassian punching hyperspace or or you know that lever that he talked about in um, episode in the last episode where he's like, "Oh, you don't know how to do this. Mm. You need me." Um, because I had heard some speculation of, oh, Cassian's making that up. That lever's not there. Yeah. He's just making it up. But by the sounds of it, that well, he flew it. It all, they all. Yeah. Got and it out. wasn't actually really lingered on in the, in the episode. It was just like, all right, well, I'll just get on. And it just seemed about like how much that they could. So it was basically what, how heavy they could make it before they could take off or something, wasn't it? Was yeah. It basically that they couldn't have it. It, it was like a, a, a weight. Um, calculator thing or something. Yeah. So I think it was sort of like, yeah, how much of this stuff, can, how heavy can you make the ship 
if it, before it stops moving, basically, um, yeah. or something along those lines. And yeah, it would, and it was quite interesting because you know, like Cassian was a functional part of the team, but he wasn't like he was the guy who got them over the line. Like I kind of expected it to be like everything fell apart, and he would be the one to sort of. You, you, yeah. you expect that that would be the thing. Like he would be the difference between it. And he was actually, you know, totally integral to it and flew them and got them out. But it was still a team effort to get it out. And they needed everybody in the team to function. Like if he wasn't part of the team, it wouldn't have succeeded. But he wasn't like he dragged everybody across the line yeah. on his own kind of thing, you know. No, he wasn't, yeah, making the winning move. Um, but, oh, my God, Nemec, like, when that thing hit him, I was like, oh, God, no. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, Catherine oh. is going to be so, <laughs> get such a fright because he's, you know, he's out because he gets into the ship and he's sort of behind the thing and he's taking shots. I'm like, oh, he's actually going to make it through this. And like they even at the start where he's just like, oh, I'm really nervous. I'm like, oh, kid, this doesn't oh, bode well. And I keep going, no, the show, you know, it, it plays with convention. It, it you know, it, but I was like, maybe the convention is to think that it's not going to play with convention and they'll do it. But, I mean, they basically did it a way where, he was safe and then he wasn't and then they actually even take him to the doctor and you yeah. think he's all right and then he doesn't make it at the end of the thing anyway so um yeah, yeah. and, and <laughs> like that hurt like i think it hurt more because he knew it was coming and he was in pain and oh mm. God, but he still got did the navigation and navigationing at the end and got them out the door and stuff as well so but he was saying climb Climb like <laughs> K2SO does in Rogue One. He says that to Cassian. Climb. Oh, maybe climb. they put Clem's. Maybe they put Clem's personality in, in into into uh, K2SO. Oh. Maybe he's got it saved on some sort of like you know he's all old oh, school Nemec. tech. Maybe he's got it on a little like floppy disk or something somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, he gave. But Cassian has the manifesto now. So, well, this is the interesting thing about where it kind of leaves it because they, you know, it's sort of job done. They get all, you know, the first, well, the, the interesting first part is that basically, you know, Val's like, well, we've got to go do the drop off. And they're like, well, we've got a contingency for if anyone gets hurt to go to the doctor. So we're going to go to the doctor first. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Cassian sort of insists that they go to the doctor. And then while they're working on him, um, Skeen or whatever his name is basically says, hey, man, there's a big spaceship over there with 80 million credits in it how about we uh we split the difference and we get out of here but i uh i can't do it on my own (laughs) i need you to fly fly it out of there which cassie had very rightfully is is like why would you just not shoot me in the back of the head first chance you get when i land that ship somewhere now that you've played your hand yeah and have you um have you been have you seen watched the bear on um no. Disney Plus yet? We've just started watching no. it last week, and he's in Skeen's in it. He like he's one of the main yeah. characters in it. And I was watching the other. I go, where have I seen this guy? For like, where is it from? And I put two and two together. Like very different characters in many ways, but very similar in other ways. Um, yeah. So it was just quite interesting that he at the end he's gone. Hey, we could just take that forty million. Yeah, so I'm trying to justify why Cassian shoots Skeen. Like he could just knock him, say no, and go dib dobbing to um, Val. Like why did he shoot him? Or did he think that Skeen would shoot him if he turned him down? Like, Yeah, well, I mean, I guess they still needed – he still needed Cassian to get off the planet. So it seems like Cassian's the only one who can fly this thing. Or at least him or maybe him or Val can't do it. Um, I think it was just, the, I think he just proved that he couldn't be trusted. So he basically he thought that he'd just sell him out the first chance he got. That if he refused to, he'd basically just turn him over. <clears throat> you know, he'd rat him out. To the, yeah. He'd rat him out if he got caught. And the, you know, the thing is, they've got eighty million credits. I don't think two guys. You know, you need a like a Luthan or a Mon Mothra to be able to move that money without oh, yeah. anybody noticing. You think someone's? <laughs> you think he'd be? He'd get caught within five minutes if he starts showing up with one of those great big like barrel things of money somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You've got. You know, I'm sure it's like Imperial stamped. It's a bit hard to like turn up to like cash converters. 
Yeah, um, and that's why Catherine's like, well, I, I take my 200 because that's a reasonable amount that I could probably get away with having. Mm. But what am I going to do with 40 million? It might as well just be like, it's just not practical. But yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he seems very disenchanted by the end because he basically bursts into that doctor's office and just says, I'm taking my money, I'm taking the ship, and I'm out of here. I've had enough. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not in this for this revolution, princess. I'm not in it for you. I expect to be well paid. He takes his money and he goes. Well, yeah. so we think. Like it's kind of just le- – it doesn't really resolve itself, does it? No, because, yeah, then it, it goes to Coruscant. Um, but it's that, okay, but he – this is the thing. He's like, yeah, I'll take my cut. My cut. Here's your kyber crystal bit back to your yeah. boss. Um, I'm out. I'm out, but you can have your ship with 80 million. I'll take this other thing and – you can have your revolution, but and your money. I'll I'm off. Yeah, um, and I think what will what we'll find is that he'll go back. He'll probably stupidly go back to the home planet and find out the heat is on. Um, that the empire's probably moved in back at his home planet, and things are taking a turn for the worse. Um. So yeah, I don't know. It's inter- it's an interesting thing because it's sort of like we assumed that when he joined up with Luthen, he was you know he was on his way to becoming you know Captain Cassian Ando, part of the rebellion, and it seems that maybe he's going to do this job, go back. He needs to have his hand forced a little bit more, I think, or his head turned a bit more, and um, he might yeah, go. Well, that's what Nemic's manifesto is for. Well, this is the thing. Like he gets back. Well, he gets back there, and maybe he feels like he needs to inspire people with this manifesto, or he eventually needs to. You know he needs the he needs the help of Luthen or the rebels for what he's doing locally. Or it's it's quite fascinating because you know we are only halfway through this thing, so there's still quite a lot of water under the bridge to go with the show. Yeah. Um, and it's quite nice because now I'm just like, oh well, I don't really know where it's going to go now. Yeah, we've got no idea what's happening next because. I'm thinking back through that trailer. There's still a few things from the trailer that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, I saw but, Guerrero obviously is the big one. Yep. Um, the party that Mon Mothma is at, obviously we thought we were all getting that last week and we were mm. all a bit bummed out we didn't see the most awkward dinner party of all time. Hmm. I'm sure that's a deleted extra somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's it's really fascinating. It's quite funny. The, I mean, they go back to Coruscant and obviously the the Imperials have the emergency meeting and it's just like, no one's going home. Tell your parents, like, something's going, like, we've just been breached. A whole bunch of money's been gone. You know, things are going to start tightening down now. We're going to start looking at all these insurgents. Um, and yeah. I think they'll start calling in the calling in the cavalry and maybe, what's his name, poor old Cyril might get a call. And it's like, hey, you... You, you know, because they'll probably check the security and be like, hey, that's that Andor guy who was on that other mm-hmm. planet that we were looking for. Um, so he might have got himself into even more trouble. But uh, just that scene of one moth giving a speech at the Senate and everybody's like tuning out because <laughs> she, <laughs> she's kind of looking around, everyone's like checking their phones. <laughs> oh, we've all been, you know, delivering information in a meeting. Like that, haven't we? And everyone's just checking out on the thing and a bit distracted by what's going on. Um, or, or is that just me? <laughs> well, I, you know, I work from home, so I, I could be on a Zoom call and and be uh, like today, you know, checking the trade 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 news in the AFL. <laughs> but uh, you know, multitasking. Um, and then you get that great scene at the end where um, Luthen's in the shop, <laughs> and it was really weird because there was like some sort of jerk. Who like some sort of rich jerk who was talking about like, oh, you're gonna go back to did it? He drops the planet name, and I was kind of going, is that somebody? Like, what does that mean? Is that? And it's just like he's just heard the news that something went down, yeah. basically. He he's somebody who thinks he's really funny. Yeah, and then um, you get the shot of Luther out the back, and he's sort of like. You know, doing a little yes. cheer. It was kind of funny because he, at the very end, he sort of gets up and puts his hands on his head. And I thought he was going to pull his wig off and just go like, <laughs> woo, and start shaking his wig around. <laughs> it didn't happen. No, no wig off. Nah, Ugh. sadly yeah. not. Yeah. But it's it's funny in that I've no idea what's going to happen next, but and yet we're on an absolute cliffhanger. 
in a sense of I don't know what's going to happen next and what's where's Cassian going to? What are the Imperials planning? Like, God, and or so good. I mean, there's no guarantees that he actually even joins the Rebellion by the end of this series. He might join the Rebellion, like, halfway through year two, like, halfway through next season where he actually joins the Rebels. Like, there's no real... We never. We kind of just assumed that by the end of this season, or in this season, he would become part of the rebels. But maybe he won't. Maybe he'll be doing something else. But oh, I don't know. Um, it's uh, it's it's very fascinating to see where it goes from here. Um, I feel yeah. like all the pieces are still a little bit moving into place. They definitely are. It's it's so interesting. Like. And if it wasn't for the tech, it really doesn't have to be Star Wars. It's just it's amazing. But there were some big Star Wars-y moments. Like, obviously, like, the, during the TIE Fighters and things, I was just like, oh, yeah, Star yeah. like, it felt very Star Wars in those little bits, but then not so much in other bits. But uh... There's obviously seeing Mom Mothma in the Senate, and I was mm. when she was talking, I was looking around to see, look at all the looking other for pods. E.T.? Oh, yes, but also looking to see if there were lots of people in the other pods and and it looked half empty. Yeah, but, you know, like sometimes you see like village of question time and, you know, yeah, half the people haven't turned up. You know, somebody when I worked at the House of Parliament in Britain and stuff, you know, a lot of the time the chamber's only got a few people in there. It's, it's you know, Prime Minister's questions is always busy and a lot of times people are debating bills and no one turns up and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure there is a level of... I was looking to see if Bale... Oh, uh, right. But I'm sure there's just a level of apathy in the Imperial Senate as well. Just like, well, we're not really doing anything here. <laughs> we're kind of just yeah. here for show. Yeah, well, what's on the schedule today? Oh, modern Mothma's making Oh, uh, here she goes boring, again. Boring. Well, boring, stick in the mud, modern Mothma. Well, go visit that shop of Luthan. <laughs> At least if good. she's here, that means her husband's out partying. Let's go find him somewhere. He's probably <laughs> having a good time. <laughs> He's party boy. We go where the party's at. Yeah. So, I mean, looking forward, they're cashed up now. So maybe that's where, you know, Saw Guerrero comes into it to a point where they're just like, hey, we've got some, you know, we've got some money. We can do some damage. We can buy some stuff. Maybe they, I don't know whether they've excommunicated him yet. I don't think so. So maybe. I don't think so. I'm trying to think back to Rebels that my very hazy remembrance of and I think at this stage Saw was on friendlier terms with the rebellion you know maybe not completely a part of the alliance but yeah on speaking terms so yeah now they've got funding that they could use to buy equipment because at some point down the line they get they get yeah x-wings and y-wings um yeah it might just be how right now we've got the money we can actually establish I mean, they might start looking at stuff like Yavin Base. They might be like, all right, well, we can start looking for a place of operations here. Oh, Dantooine. Dan- oh, they start at Dantooine, don't they? Maybe that's yeah. it. Oh, that's no your history. Very good. I mean, they might just go to Saw and say, we've got some money. He's just like, oh, some missiles. Or, you know, <laughs> like, well, I'm not really thinking that. It's like, no, all right, you know, tanks, missiles, anything that can blow things up, I'm all for that. Yep. Um, yeah, it's... Um, God, it was good. It was so. It was yeah. so good. I was really like, I was, you know, I've already invested in this being a Star Wars fan, and already being a fan of this show. But it really just gripped me the whole time, and it was bloody just, just tense, and it just sort of, it all sort of played out. I'm like, all right, they've got to walk up here. Now they've got to stand here. Where, where are they? Where is this going? Okay, these guys have come in. They're doing this, and then it just sort of up the tension. Like, oh yeah, they're like, we're in, we're hostage. We're doing hostages. Okay, this is. Yeah, it. Um... And what was interesting was that the only we didn't see much of the preparation, but part of the preparation we did see was Cassian having to learn another language, which didn't end up coming into play for him. So was so, it the language, the language of the locals? It must have been. But obviously, Lieutenant Gorn was. Um, he was the one talking to them. But I think at some stage they had said that 
Clem would be the one to like filling any gaps if there were. Yeah, he was a contingency plan, so he had to be prepared to do any part of the operation, yep. which was, and I, I really don't know why they felt they didn't, they couldn't tell Cassian about what um, Val and Cinta were doing. I, you know, like they. Like when they did they went not off. tell, or did they just basically just say we'll meet you there. I can't remember. Did they specifically say we're not going to tell you, or was it more just like we're doing our thing? And um, so they they're like, yeah, we're off. Um, he's in charge, and and Cassian's like, well, okay, where are they going? Yeah, you don't need to know. Yeah, right. You don't need to know. Well, I think there's still just. I mean, there was still obviously a level of mistrust, you know, about yeah. how much he needed to know. Um, but again, it seemed like it was just more that they had to be able to get in knock out the comms and also be able to get into the building and they couldn't walk in as soldiers. So they, <clears throat> there was no sort of – I mean, this was the only, you know, the fact that this you know, media shower was there and that they were going to escort and there was a legitimate reason for them to be walking from that far out yeah. um, <clears throat> was the reason that they were there. But uh, goodness me, so good. So good. Oh, so good. Like <laughs> – the bar has been raised again. Um, I'll be really interested to see what the uh, the general feedback is, but I, f- I feel like people will be pretty happy with it. And like you said, it was good that it just played out. It didn't do the old like let's talk about the plan while we do while we execute, so we have to explain it all out. It was actually a pretty simple. It was just sort of get into the building, make sure you're in the room with these people at this time, and then you know. I think the most complicated part of the plan was the timing that the timing had to be precise. They had to be flying through the meteor shower when it was at its peak so that the TIE fighters couldn't Just really intercept them, them very yeah. easily. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously that played into them being able to get out because the meteors were taking out the TIE fighters. Um, just before we wrap up, to a little shout out to the Imperial Serving Boys who just had their little aprons on and like who were doing the buffet. Did you see that? They, I don't know whether yes. they, I don't know whether they were just people who have other jobs and they've just been you know talked into doing catering for this event, or whether they're just like the guys who have to who have to just put all like organize everybody's dinners and everything. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they're they're the cooks. They're the caterers. They're so they they'd be like the NCOs, um, you know, non commissioned officers. I'm picturing a whole lot of um, Chief O'Briens from Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, who were just there, part of it, not really believing in the cause. Because mm. you've got to think that okay, most of those Imperial people, they probably don't really believe in the cause. It's just it's a just government a, job. It's a good job. It's got benefits. Know? Yeah, yep. three hots and a cot. As they say, yeah. and let's face it, they didn't. The rebels didn't go out shooting everyone. No, you know, they could have. Well, they, they were only dealing what? with, like you said, they were dealing with like the staff and like the radio people for the most part, and they're just like, all right, yeah. everybody who who by default isn't get given a gun. Yeah, uh, and then most of the actual soldiers and stuff were all sort of out keeping the peace out the front. Yeah. Yeah, and they were shooting people. You know, they shot back obviously when they were being shot at or when it was threatened. But I think they were going to, if they'd gotten away, they were just going to leave everyone there. I mean, we don't see back to what to where Cinta was holding um, the commander's wife and son, but. She had no reason to kill them, so... Yeah, it didn't seem like that they were going to gain them. anything by doing that anyway. I mean, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, look, let's just um, let's just sit back and enjoy the ride. Um, I'll definitely watch it again before next week. Yeah. And I'm just sort of curious to see where we go. If it has been going in these blocks of three, um, these stories and stuff. So I, I, I imagine that it will probably do the same thing again, but it'll just be where do we, where do we pick up what's going on? Where are we at? Um, yeah. It's going to be good. Are you are you oh. ready to roll, Catherine? Are you? I know you. You came into this with a very high level of expectation, <laughs> but it's um 
it must feel nice to be having something that's so good that you don't actually have to be like, well, I already said I was going to like it, so I've got to like it. Yeah. I can just be happy that it's good. Yeah, vindication. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it is a sense of relief that everyone seems to like it. I don't – and I don't feel the need to go, oh, no, I like this bit was good with, you know, your voice going up going, yeah, it was it was good. Yeah. Um, no, but it's – Good, and it's quality television. It's not just a good Star Wars TV show. It is a good TV show. Um, it's it's fantastic. And Well, since oh. we're not going to get a Star Wars movie till 2025 now, um, mm. it's lucky that we've got all this goodness to lean back on. So, um, all right, well, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there. We could just go around in circles talking about how good it is, but, I mean, you know. You, we'll save you some minutes. You can go back and watch it again, and we'll be back next week. Oh, oh by the way. Yes. Yes. So, Serial Gate. The name was what did they? Crunchies. What did the? Cr- yeah. Yeah. Crunchies. Starwars.com nah. came and shut down your poll pretty quick. They just said, no. Nah. We've already got nah. the boxes printed for Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> They're going to be coming out soon. So. Sure, they probably couldn't print it with the name I had come up with but you could do the off-brand you can do the off-brand ones you can do the black and gold label or the aldi version catherine <laughs> that all comes from the same factory it's just got a different label on it yeah we all know what it's really called <laughs> we'll have to do a uh, a pause on the on the spread at the at the governor's party thing or whatever it was i didn't really get a close enough look at the food um oh, did they show much yeah there was like one shot of like the table with some food on it but i didn't really get a good look okay. at it so We'll have to go back and have a look at that and see if we can pick apart anything from there. But uh, Catherine, we just we roll on. We, the, the bar is set, is kicked even higher again. Um, we'll see you next week. Oh, most definitely. My week is built around Andor. <laughs> so you've only got six more sleeps to go now. Seven more sleeps to go. Yes. Yes. We'll see you then. God, it's such a long week. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.